Um, so now we'll turn to the Contouring Collaborative for Consensus in Radiation Oncology, the Star Wars themed CRC3RO. And this is uh, Diana Lynn who will be uh, doing the session. I'm glad to see the C3PO character in there. I wasn't off mark with thinking it was Star Wars related. So we're waiting for uh, Diana to be unmuted. Hi all, can you hear me now? Perfect. Okay, perfect. Um, well, thank you so much for having me. I'm a, a fourth year medical student at Penn State and I've been doing a lot of research with Erin Gillespie um, and Dave Fuller. And so I'm happy to be here and present um, a new project that is uh, coming your way. How do I advance? Perfect. So these are my disclosures. So contouring can be subject to considerable inter-observer variability, even among experts, uh, which can really lead to inconsistent contour quality, poor disease control, and increased toxicity. So a recent review actually found that a major deviations in target delineation can occur in up to 13% of RT plans across five different trials. So auto segmentation has really emerged as a potential way to help decrease this contour variability and thereby improve quality. Um, now the concept of an AI isn't really new. It's actually been successfully applied to a variety of diagnostic subspecialties, such as pathology and radiology to treat areas like skin and breast. However, uh, applying these current algorithms to radiation oncology has been really limited by the number of small, uh, by, by a small size of available data sets. As such, we aim to conduct a crowdsource challenge that really engages radiation oncologists worldwide in a cloud-based contouring um, and to, to really collect more of these multi-segmented cases that can then be used for the creation of a simulation training tool, improvement of auto-segmentation algorithms, and the development of a potential consensus guideline. So our first aim is to test, test whether this idea of crowdsourcing to generate a data set focused on complex OARs and target volumes for just 12 cases in 12 months is feasible and will be statistically sound. We then want to identify whether this um, the potential, if there are any potential associations with physician characteristics and the most effective recruitment strategies incentives and variations in contour quality. Now, we hypothesize that a large group of non-expert physicians will perform as well as a small group of experts. And so the novel idea here is really that we, we can potentially have this expert quality training data set without necessarily needing actual time intensive expert input all the time. Um, and so participants, uh, there it is. And then participants um, will be asked to complete at least one contour for a different case each month for a total of 12 months. And their performance will be scored in comparison to this overall participant consensus contour. And then it'll be posted in a monthly leaderboard. They'll also get weekly gift card raffles to promote participation. And at the end of each month, all participants will gain exclusive access to a video podcast hosted by two to three experts reviewing contouring errors and um, a study contour file data. So for head and neck, we'll have potentially definitely David Fuller and somebody else. Um, and we, plan to leverage the wide reach of e-contour to recruit these radiation oncology professionals. Uh, physician participants will be recruited through e-contour's user base, which currently includes over 20,000 users from over 128 countries, about 12,650 of whom have been identified as practicing radiation oncologists who collectively access about 1,000 cases per weekday. We'll also be using Twitter, RockSec's newsletter, and of course, the symposium to spread the word. So stay tuned um, for a link to pre-register. 
So before participating, folks will be also asked to complete an intake survey regarding their profession, practice setting, years of experience, patient volume, and specialization. They will also be asked questions that we're interested in for outcomes. So uh, things like how they learned about this challenge and their motivation for participating. We hypothesize that Twitter and eContour will be the most effective recruitment strategies worldwide and that residents and uh, physicians with fewer years of experience in um, practice will be more likely to report using Twitter for recruitment. We also think that a majority of participants will likely select a non-financial incentive in addition to potentially the gift card option as well. We also hypothesize that among physicians, high volume and specialization will be associated with a greater similarity to the staple consensus contour. And this contour quality will be calculated via a combination of similarity and surface distance metrics for each case. Um, and I'm happy to talk about sort of the metrics a little bit more since our, our team actually recently published a review on contouring evaluation metrics in the Green Journal as well. So for our analysis plan, success slash feasibility will really be predefined as 30 plus contours per submitted case. And we'll also use descriptive statistics and chi-square analyses to determine associations between participant characteristics and method of recruitment. Um, we'll use a logistic regression to assess variables associated with um, financial versus non-financial incentives and a linear regression to analyze associations between physician characteristics and similarity to the consensus contour. So in addition to comparing participant contours to this overall consensus contour among their peers, we'll also compare the participant consensus contour to those of experts. And uh, based on something called the central limit theorem, we hypothesize that a consensus contour of about 50 participants will be as good as, if not better, than the median score of the experts. And we'll be using, you know, Jensen Shannon index to evaluate um, and, and do some of the statistical analysis. We hope that this study will help improve our understanding of how targeted behavioral strategies can help promote engagement with interactive online platforms for education, quality improvement, and research. And if this pilot study is successful, then we'll, well, we can set up a process to get hundreds or thousands of multi-segmented cases to generate data set, a data set for developing auto-segmentation algorithms. And this will really help also create a simulation-based training tool that provides automated expert-based feedback, which is um, the project that Mike Scherer was discussing earlier. So it all links together and that could be help integrated into CME accreditation. So I wanted to take this time to then thank my mentors and um, the RSNA Medical Student Grant for helping support and fund this work. Um, and thank you to Roxig again for having me. And I'm happy to answer any questions or um, take any suggestions you might have. Thank you. Thanks, Diana. That was fascinating. And I'm really enjoy how you've brought some different sort of conceptual frameworks, even from behavioral theories in, into this too. It's quite fascinating. I think we have time for one question and I'm just looking on, on the side here through. Um, actually, one is more of a comment, I believe. So perhaps I'll go to Anna's question here. She said, in terms of inter-rater reliability, I guess, between the sort of experts and not, have you, in terms of your statistics, have you thought about Kappa statistics versus Bland, Aldman, et cetera? Oh, you're muted. Mm -hmm. Can you do an interpretive dance for this one? <laughs> I think I think she thinks that's a great idea, Anna. Maybe she can type it in. Oh, Dan, she's at, she's. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm unmuted here, now. Perfect. Um, that's a great question. Um, I'm actually still in the process of really like getting my feet wet in statistics, and so I really had to relearn a lot of like. Uh, different types of analysis for this. So, I mean, it's definitely something I can look into. Um, but for now, you know, the the logistic regressions with, you know, chi-squared and um, whatever was outlined in the slide is, is our basic 
plan, but as we kind of collect more data and, um, you know, kind of see what we have, we'll definitely be able to integrate a lot more other statistical analyses. Um, and I just wanted to add this, this, even though we are targeting residents and radiation oncology attendings, um, this is open to anyone. So if you're a dosimetrist, you're a uh, radiation therapist, med student, like you are welcomed to join us and participate in this challenge. Um, you might even win a gift card, you'll get to compete with peers. It's, it's going to be really exciting. Thank you. Well, excellent work. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, and, and I'm happy to chat more offline. I um, had just done some projects on kind of looking at like consensus condors and radiology actually in the past. So Kappa and Land Altman could be considered, but yeah, we can chat more offline. But yeah, excellent project, super exciting. I think Erin also put a link in the chat so people can look out for that. Yes, um, please uh, pre-register if you're interested in this. Thank you. Yay. Excellent. All right. 